Hello community! Today, three new AI systems that are really useful. So, let's say you have here this page. Uh, it's a PDF. And you have a question. Hey, what qualifies here for tax paying? And you wonder the AI understands everything. The side tax, the diagram, every single numerical value. Here, the complete explanation of what is going on and the text. Or you have this one. And you say, hey, calculate the projected peak electricity demand in California for the year 2030. So you have to calculate something. But of course, now for spreadsheets, we have something new. We have from Microsoft Spreadsheet LLM. And you know, so we have now a Microsoft Excel product. And now we have the AI extension, if you want, a Microsoft Spreadsheet LLM. And they have a real complex structure, sheet compressor, structural anchor-based compression, inverse index translation, data format error, aggregation. And if you perform all of this and more, it surpasses the best existing models only by 12%. And I said, okay, but how do I encode this? And you know that the classical form of encoding here our spreadsheet data is either in a markdown or in an XML encoding or in an HTML encoding. So you have a lot of string information that you can provide now to your large language model. And please note, we are here in the base model and the large language model. Great. And I will give you here the instruction, the vanilla prompt template, if you normally use here a spreadsheet table detection. And it goes like this. Give them an input that is a string denoting data of cells in a spreadsheet. The input spreadsheet includes many pairs. Each pair consists of a cell address and the text in that cell. And you have a separator like a comma. So you have a one comma year and the cell is separated and you see this. And now this new spreadsheet LLM prompt template for the spreadsheet table detection here out of the publication by Microsoft is now as follows. Given the input that is a string denoting data of cells in an Excel spreadsheet. So you have to have here the Excel spreadsheet, not just a PDF. Please notice here, this is a significant point. The input spreadsheet contains many tuples describing the cells with content in the spreadsheet. So each tuple consists of two elements separated here by a vertical dash. And we have here vertical dash A1 and then the number and the cell formats. You have email data, integer number, whatever. And then we have the scientific notation tab A1 to B3. So you see, this is now the spreadsheet LM prompt template. But what if you want to understand this so that the AI understands this? Common outcome error targeted here for different age group. Is it doable here with a spreadsheet if you have only a PDF, for example? Not really. And you see, this is exactly what we will tackle. Or let's say you have here a specific, let's call it charts, up and down and whatsoever, and you want to extract the information of this PDF files. You want that AI understands the chart and can extract the numerical values of this chart. And you might say, hey, wait, about seven days ago in your community tab, you showed us, we have now a new chart gamma developed by York University, Quebec AI and Salesforce Research. Should you hear the code, the online demo, everything beautiful. If you want to have a deep dive here in the technology, I would highly recommend this from beginning of July 2024, Chart Gamma, Visual Instruction Tuning for Chart Reasoning in the World. And now, now we've seen two new systems, now we are ready to take the next step. So here we go now with Cole Pali. And this is an efficient document retrieval with vision language model. So we are stepping up now the complexity, not like Microsoft here in language only model, but now we combine here vision and language model for our AI topology. And here you have the orders, beautiful beginning here of July 2024. They develop Cold Poly. And this is a highly interesting system for you. Now, you know that the normal standard retrieval, if you have PDF documents, it is simple. 
But you also know if you do this that the performance bottleneck here in the efficient document retrieval, for example, here for your rack system, this R, this retrieval augmented generation, is not in the embedding model performance, but in the prior data ingestion pipeline. You have to prepare the data for your LLM, for your rack system, whatever you use. And you see here that the standard retrieval for a particular benchmark test for particular conditions is about seven seconds per page and you have an optical character recognition OCR system and then you have the layout detection then you have a specific chunking strategy where you define the group text messages with some semantic coherence together and then you know the drill. Beautiful. And you know what? The question was now, how can we improve this? How can we make it faster and how can we improve the quality of the document retrieval for our REC system? Essential, interesting information. And you know, even if some say like Microsoft that the classical REC is dead and we have now graph REC, or I showed you in my last video here, the speculative REC here, so either Microsoft or you go with Google or whatever you like, independent to prepare the data and the information in the documents. And let's say it's a PDF with figures and you do not have the Excel file available, but you only have, let's say, a PDF. Whatever you need, those data you need for the graph representation and those data and information extracted from the PDF, you need also for your vector store, for your vector embeddings. So it is essential for those systems to work. And now the beauty now of this new research is that they have two new, if you want, products. The first is a new benchmark, a visual document retrieval benchmark, VDRE. Beautiful, multiple domains, multiple languages, multiple settings for a textual and visual understanding. A real complex, advanced benchmark, not as simple as the other one, but for this video, I will just tell you we have a new benchmark, but I will focus here on the vision language model, which is called Call Poly. So the authors propose here a novel model architecture and a new training strategy based on vision language model to efficiently index the documents purely from the visual features. And this is great. And this Call Poly, if done right, outperforms all other retrieval systems. And this is now something special that beats everything that we have from Spreadsheet LLM or whatever, because now we integrate vision here in the understanding. Now, don't get me right. I don't want to skip here the beautiful benchmark that was developed. And it is real complex to build here new benchmark data, transparent data. And as you can see here, they build on the current academic data sets the document visual question and answer, info vision and question and answer, the archive question and answer, GPT-4 vision generated, synthetic questions and everything. So if you want to have a deep dive, there's also a nice information here about classical academic benchmark data sets. But their methodology, their new vision language model is now called Pali. And you can see we have a significant speed improvement. We are just at 0.4 seconds per page. Now, what is it? It is a novel model architecture. Real nice, but a little bit complex, and it builds on a lot of different subsystems. So a new model architecture for document retrieval, which leverages here our vision language model to index the documents using only their visual feature. So whatever you have, a graph, maybe some visualization, maybe some table, maybe some pure text. The system was trained to perform well on those data. Plus, it integrates here a very clever mechanism, and I will explain this a little bit later on, the late interaction mechanism for some efficient query matching to enhance the retrieval performance of your REC system. So you have a better performance and you have a reduced latency compared to your classical REC system. So I would say, hey, why not have a look at this system and understand if you want to give it a try. However, please note that now we are operating it purely in vision language transformer, not on the simple language models. 
The faster the indexing is, the visual processing requirements on our hardware infrastructure now may limit here this deployment in research constrained environments. So you need to have the compute power for this model. Now for all my green grasshoppers, I need now, if I want to explain you here, this late interaction, I need that you understand here Colbert. Colbert, Stanford University, about June 2020, beautiful, efficient and effective passage search via a contextualized late interaction over a birth system. Beautiful. And we will use this understanding of late interaction and apply it now to our vision language model. So we go from language model to vision language model and we use the same late interaction idea. If you want to see it here in a visualization, normally if you have an all to all interaction in a birth structure, you have the query and then you have your document and the calculate here the semantic coherence and the relevance and everything and you go with all to all and here in the late interaction they just separate here up to a certain stage here the query interconnectiveness and the document interconnectiveness and then at a later interaction then they bring it together and this has some beautiful performance issues and i will show you this in a minute great so just to understand call bert and call polly yes there are some similarities but Colbert, just to be clear, pioneering model introduced the concept of late interaction for the effective and efficient passage search, but it deals exclusively with textual data. And now we take the technology to a new step to vision language model. This is it. So whatever you have a textual context and any visual information, images, graph, layout, now call Pali is here to do the job. How does it work? Each element on the page, whatever it is, is transformed into a vector in the embedding space. This ensures that all aspects of the document are considered beautiful. Now, similar to the Colbert mechanism, Colpauli also represents each document in query as a series of vectors instead of a single vector. And this beautiful multi-vector approach here allows for a much more granular comparison between the queries and the documents because, you will see in a minute, there is a beautiful pre-compute functionality with them. Once both documents and queries are encoded in multi-vector representation, we use the late interaction during the querying phase, calculates the relevance between the query and the document by dynamically comparing each vector from the query to all vectors in the document, and you have a scoring function. For example, you identify the maximum similarity scores across all these vectors, aggregate the scores to determine the overall document relevance. Great. Now, what are the advantages of our late interaction? And this is especially powerful if you're working on vision language model that need a lot of computer infrastructure. As I told you, by comparing each component of the query with each component of the document, the system can capture here some nuances and relevance that might be missed by a more holistic approach. So what we do, we separate the encoding stage and the interaction stage. So this means that the late interaction models can pre-compute and index the document embeddings independently of the queries. If you just remember one sentence of late interaction, this is the sentence for you. Because this makes now the model highly efficient during the query phase, as the computational intensive part of embedding generation is already completed. And since the comparison is deferred until a query is actually made, the later interaction model can easily handle dynamic and ad hoc queries without the need to reprocess the entire document corpus, which would be really a heavy task, especially if you're dealing here only with vision elements. So you see, late interaction, something beautiful we're going to use here, and we borrow it from the language methodology toolkit. Now, if you want to experience cool poly, beautiful, here's your GitHub, here you see everything, Read me 47 minutes ago, beautiful, but it is nice and you have a demonstration. You have here, for example, the complete code. This is all that you need to run it. You have an example configuration if you want to run it here 
with a different path configuration, with different LoRa or with different LoRa Alpha, with a LoRa dropout, whatever you like, it is as simple quotation mark as this. The code is there. You can try it out. And on Hugging Face, you even have a demo space where you can experience this. Now let's come here to the results. And the, all the other models from our good old friend, our BM25, now to the latest here to the best, called Poly. Now, if you see here in the last line, this is here, of course, the best performance and all the different benchmarks that they have here. So great. But I like here this kind of visualization because they show you how Coal Poly is developed. What are the steps? So at first they start with Siglip, then they have here by Siglip with a fine tuning, and they put in here a polyjama with an LLM with a bi encoder. And then they have here the Coal Poly with the late interaction now integrated. And you see, every step we go, we're gonna get a little bit better. Exactly like this one, minus two, but here. We're going to get a little bit better. And this is nice. So let me just follow here exactly this representation. And let's start with the first one, Siglip. What is it? Significant language image pre-training is a vision language. And this is now important, a bi encoder model. Pre-trained on a large corpus of image text pairs. Model encodes document and queries into a dense vector space like we know it and the similarity with query and document vectors indicated the relevance. You know all of this. So we have now with Siglip, the first step, a dual encoder framework, one encoder for textual input and another one for the visual input. And each encoder transformed the respective inputs into embeddings in a shared vector space. The model is trained using a contrastive loss that aligns the embedding of text and corresponding images, enhancing the model ability to understand or retrieve documents. Beautiful. Quickly encode text and images into embedding. This is what we want. Now, the next step is here, an enhanced version of our Siglip model, further fine-tuned to optimize its performance specifically for our document retrieval task for our REC, for our R in the REC. So more fine tuning, our system here undergoes additional training on a document oriented data set, which helps refine its embeddings for a better performance, such as we have now additional training on the figure retrieval and on especially the table retrieval functionality. So this additional fine tuning phase is designed to improve the model's ability to understand complex document structures and layout. That's all there is to it. Now, the next step is beautiful because it brings in Polyjama. Polyjama here from July 10th, 2024, a beautiful paper by Google DeepMind. And it shows you here an open source vision language model based here on our Siglip vision encoder and a gamma 2 billion free trainable parameter language model. And we will integrate this. We will bring this Polyjama now in and we will improve now our system in the third step. And we have now a bi poly. This integrates here the polyjama model that I just showed you. This means it combines here a language model capability with a vision transformer to create a much more powerful and a better document understanding system. Now, from the architecture, we pair now a Siglip generated image patch embedding, more about this in a second, with a text language model allowing for the contextualization of image embeddings alongside the textual data. And our large language model, you guessed it, is the JAMA 2B. And this helps here by Poly in enhancing the multilingual text understanding, which is especially helpful if you have different languages. And then we have now this multimodal processing. We have the text and the image data and the BPOLY supports now a more comprehensive document analysis. Isn't this beautiful? Now, of course, Polyjammer is now something that is nice. Polyjammer model itself extends here the concept from Poly3 and projects here our cyclic patch embeddings into the Gamma 2B text vector space. Polyjammer, I just showed you the publication. If you want to have a detailed look at this, it is real nice. 
But for the patch embedding, I would recommend you read this document here. It's an, a continuous version. This one I read is from January of 2024. And Google DeepMind, Switzerland, and they show you here exactly how the deeper insight into these patch embeddings. So this is the literature for you. However, if you say, okay, Polyjama 3B, how can I fine tune now this vision language VLM here for my particular data? I have this video for you some weeks ago where I showed you the code to fine tune your vision language model. And I used here in particular the Polyjama 3B model for the fine tuning. And this is it. And now we have just one step to integrate for our full fledged Cold Poly, and you know exactly what it is. We use now from the Cold Bear strategy the late interaction mechanism to provide here a good boost here in the performance and to have here a faster pre compute system where we have even good response to ad hoc queries. So, Cold Poly, yeah, we have a protection layer. And we reduce here the complexity in the number of dimensions of each embedding. And then, of course, the reduced dimension embeddings are to be stored in an index, a structured storage that allows here for the quick retrieval. You know, index, as always, essential for the efficient searching of documents during the query phase. Indexed quick access, you know this benefits. But now let's see what happens if the first query arrives to now call Pali. The same process as the documents, the query text, and any visual content in this is now passed through the same vision language model and the projection layer to generate here some reduced dimension embeddings. We have to have a semantic coherence, of course. Queries transformed into a series of factors that match the format and the dimensionality of the document embedding stored in the index. So if we have now both the document and the query in the same format, compact, efficient embedding, now we utilize here the late interaction mechanism for the retrieval. So this means for each query, the model computes here the scores based on the similarity between the query's embedding and the embedding of each document part in the index. And this is typically done using a dot product or a cosine similarity, whatever you like, whatever is your metric in your particular mathematical space. And then you just simply calculate the highest matching score across the vectors for a detailed alignment. You capture here the most relevant match based on the textual and visual cues. And then the similarity scores from the later interaction are aggregated to produce the final relevant score for each document with respect to the queries. And then those docs are ranked based on these aggregated scores with higher scores indicating, of course, more relevant documents. As simple as this. So here we have it. Let's, let me give you a short summary of what we achieved today. We understand that now our global AI provider and all the research that is happening now, you see, for example, spreadsheet LLM by Microsoft. Here, we still are limited to an only language model. And the next step already happened at the same time before even Microsoft published the spreadsheet LLM. You see, we already have by the industry, like Salesforce, for example, here, chart Gamma, a vision language model. So in order to address here the shortcomings of text-centric retrieval system like spreadsheet, we had to develop, or they, the researcher, had to develop a new architecture and integrating now the capabilities of vision language model to generate higher quality contextualized embeddings from document images. And then the next step was to look here at a, let's say, mechanism here, already at the BERT system, at the language uh, branch, this call BERT. This was officially 2020, a passage search via a contextualized late interaction mechanism. And now we use this late interaction mechanism and we bring it over now to our vision language model for what we know currently the best document retrieval methodology with a vision language model called Pali. And Cool Pali kind of introduces here a methodological shift in the document retrieval by incorporating here a buying coder setup 
We had a separate encoders process here, the different modality content of our documents. Is it perfect? No. I implemented it. I had some demo runs on Cool Poly. It is nice. Currently, if you have, I don't know, 1000 pages that you upload as a PDF, and I have one particular question, now I get here from all these 1000 pages answers. I get the pages of, I don't know, page 612 and page 15. And in these pages is exactly the answer to my question. Also, if it is not text encoded, although the information is encoded in charts, encoded in graphs, encoded in figures, or to be calculated and the corresponding basic data for the calculation is given. So we are not there yet to have a kind of a perfect AI system that can look at any PDF form with any visual context, chart, graphs, bar, whatever. But at least we can now pinpoint here the pages for this particular task, the query that we ask our AI system to perform. And we have now all these beautiful pages with relevant information selected for us. And now the next step would of course be to further fully integrate this particular retrieved information. You can build your graph rack if you want, you can have your speculative rack, you can have combinations of both of them. But we are one step further. And you know what? All this happened just in one week. Except Colbert, but the idea is from 2020. But the implementation now in Cold Poly isn't this beautiful. So in one week, you can really make a jump here from a simple spreadsheet language model to a complete multimodal document retrieval with vision language model like Cold Poly. I hope this video was informative. You got an idea what's currently going on in research and maybe you want to go there and try out one of those three systems yourself. It is really interesting. They have their limitations, of course, but depending on your data, depending on your task, depending on your data format, depending on your data complexity, I found at least here in Cool Poly is a real nice first try. It opens up a complete new avenue. And also, I kind of like your chart gamma here, our vision language model, to understand real complex charts, like say, in physics. This is it for today. I hope I see you in my next video.